Hello everyone, my name is Finn Fontaine, welcome to the fourth episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm gonna start this off saying the same thing I have said in every other recording I've made of Doki Doki Literature Club so far. If this is your first time joining my series, I highly recommend going back to episode one of this series, which will be in this playlist, or you can just go back to my channel and find it, because you're not gonna know what the fuck is going on if you just jump right into the game out of nowhere. If you don't know much about this game, it's a dating game with a little bit of a twist. You probably already heard of it, okay, but there's no twist, but there is a twist though but there's not a twist but there is and it's scary here we go now you've most likely noticed by now that this video is uh an hour or so long i'm planning on making it um that's because uh this game seems like it's gonna be pretty long and uh i figure uh i was already making them 30 some minutes long so fuck you uh you know sit back grab a snack relax have some fun sit down next to me Save the seat right for you, you sexy ass bitch. And here we go. And we lead, we we begin where we left off in episode three. Ugh! Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. It is is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the re recitation. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was sh that was so good, Monica. Ah, thank you. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. What? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches a sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It, it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what hap happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns, and it's structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling f fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and me and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. My, my pants are falling off. It's not that we didn't want to applaud her. We were, but we were so we were caught off guard. But we were so caught off guard. Ah! But we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay, I guess I'm next then. Sayori so hops out of her chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Uh. <laughs> Sorry, I giggled! Sayori. Ah! So it's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror, or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out that best best that way. I see, I see. Okay, then. Sayori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. Or oh, soft voice? The poem is aimlessly cheery like Sayori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it, but hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. I'm so retarded with words sometimes. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! She didn't even read hers! Oh, well, that's right, I'm not they haven't read the- what am I saying? They haven't severed the poems were. Good job, Sayori. Eehehe! <laughs> even Moldy Faggot liked it! What is that supposed to mean? I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? Hey, that's what I just said. It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be the that other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Huh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. 
They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. <laughs> then next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. Cut! We don't have much time before the festival, you know? Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm, yeah, I'm saying Natsuki now. I realize it's not Natsuki. I don't know why I'm saying that. That must have been really annoying. It's Natsuki. I don't know why I'm... Hmm. Don't make me go before Moldy Faggot. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Moldy Faggot lower everyone's standards a little before I have to... Fuck you, bitch! I've been nicer to you! I've been nice to you the whole time! I've been trying to fuck you this whole game! Don't you come at me, you big ass fucking big big, big head ass sexy bitch. <laughs> Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting, bitch, you fucking idiot. <laughs> anyway, the poem is called, jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people would be way easier. I can put what on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. You know, that's how oh, I am too. If it's strangers, I'll do, I'll do anything. If it's like my family and shit, I'm like... It's like you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to do his weird shit. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. See, it's, it's for me, I, I do better in front of strangers than I do family members and shit. I don't know. Maybe when I do, like, public weird shit. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez! I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy, look at my ass. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival's coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. After the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <coughs> Jeez, guys, don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that, bitch? It's okay, moldy faggot, you don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Sayori's being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, uh, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... Uh, I mean... Uh oh 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 Sayori fumbles with the words. So, let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me in the spot here. <laughs> I would walk home with Natsuki. I would still walk home with Sayori. Um... Um... I mean, I put Natsuki as my main bitch. She is a bitch, but I don't know why she's the one I want to go for. Uh, I, but Sayori, she's also my... She's been my, my other one I've been thinking about. I don't... What do I do? I've been committed to, say, to Nasuki the whole time.
This is a really tough decision. I really don't know what to do. I, 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 I guess I, I would, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm just saving it because like if I regret my decision, I don't like doing that normally, but like I'm just gonna say it's Nasuki. Walking with Nasuki, huh? Why does that thought... Why does the thought of that make my heart pound? I mean, I think I'd be afraid of what she'd do to me if I turned her down. Isn't she so cute and fun to be around? That has nothing to do with what I just said. <laughs> you admitted it. Jeez. There's not even any point in speculating with something that's never going to happen. Well, maybe. But I just like to think about it. It's not long before you won't need me anymore, you know? Need you? Okay, so that didn't really change much, I guess? Or maybe it did, I don't know. Sayori, I can't figure out how you're seeing things in your head right now. Sorry, everyone is different. Oh, nobody in the club is a replacement for you. Hmm? If you say so. The conversation trails off, and I'm left feeling awkward. But it was kind of her fault for trapping me with such a weird question. I can't just lie to her. But if there's something that makes her happy, I would hate to take that away from her. That's why I said there's no point in speculating. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time. I mean, Nasuki is a bitch, but still, I'm, she's the one I'm going for, so. We're going for Nasuki still. So, uh, I want my bitch. Um, so we're going to go... Uh, not flying. Nope. Fuck. Puppy. There we go. Um, giggle. Yes. Flower. No. Uh, childhood. No. Why was that her? Chocolate. Yeah. Um, cute. Yes. Uh, Hard. No! Lollipop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, color. Wait, um... Color? No, bitch! Uh, candy. Yes. Milk. Yes. <laughs> yes. Doki Doki's always an option, but I never choose it. Uh, who would do that? Oh, she likes Doki Doki. I'm glad I chose. Um... Damn it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I haven't gotten anything for Yuri. Fuck you, Yuri. I hate you. Mm, shiny? Yes. Laugh. No! Kitty! Yes. Yes, strawberry. Alright. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. <laughs> Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Nasuki? Well, yeah, I'm not talking about our part of the festival, but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You, of all people? Eh? I didn't say I didn't like. I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Eh? Fine, fine. She's, 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 she's real happy. Is it, is it because of what I said? Is that, is that what's going on? Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori's sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I waved my hand in front of her face. Eh? You're spacing out again. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, 
<laughs> Sorry, don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sayori shows a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, all right. Oh, man, I'm making Sayori upset. She likes me. I, I was thinking about going for her, but I, I don't know. Natsuki's got my... She's got what's right here. My penis. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already disperse, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is sh shuffling through some papers at her desk. Moldy faggot, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica appears across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind. But I'm surprised I'm not the one I am not the one asking you, Moldy Faggot. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. She's always talked to me about things that bother her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. I mean, I'm also friends with her, and I ca also care about the well-being of my club members, you know? Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh? Are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, moldy faggot. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? H how would you not, asswipe? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Yeah! She's been so much happier ever since you've joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it's always been. <laughs> You're so funny, moldy faggot. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful because that's how she is when she's around you? Uh-huh. I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. Alright, I smacked my lips. Oh god, that's a horrible noise. I'm so sorry. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Okay. Ah. Uh, Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. I'm gonna put my teeth in. Mmm, teeth. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else, but that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary, but there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Monica! Oh, Monica! Hey, you. Oh, here's where it gets hot. Eh? I look up to see Natsuki's next, Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so. Ah, uh, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It, it's not like I'm worried. I was just. Natsuki glances down on her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now you make me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave you alone, and I will. I mean, assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles the la last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. S sayori Uh-oh, what you down with? Thinking about her. Yeah, she seems pretty down today, but she didn't want to admit it to me, so I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh, Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing, but anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't just, you can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that kind of what she said of me. That's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly. If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah, I should have thought about it, thought of it that way from the start. I think it fiddles with the book she's holding in her hands. She, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not. Jeez, if you're fine, then let's hurry and get started already. 
Yeah, yeah. One of you wants me, you want my dick, don't you? Okay, everyone. After some time passes, Monica calls out the club room. Why don't we share our poems now? Before I know it, everything is back to normal. Everyone goes to retrieve their poems, and I do the same. I make eye contact with Monica. <laughs> oh, Monica. And she smiles at me. I wonder what she was talking about, Sayori. Who should I show my poem to first? Uh, Nasuki, of course. Let's see, let's see. You're certainly enthusiastic today. Of course, you know I like your writing. I'm just surprised. It seems like you had a lot of trouble admitting that before. Well, well, of course. I just had to put you in your place a little bit. It's not like, I mean, it's not like I was shy or anything stupid like that. Or jealous. I really, just, I really wasn't jealous. Just because you happen to be a good writer, that's such a dumb thing to get jealous about. <laughs> Natsuki. What? You're not very confident about your writing, are you? Eh? What are you talking about? My writing's obviously the best, right? It took me a while to figure out, but I think I finally did. Maybe Natsuki acts so arrogant because she's trying to make up for her own insecurities. Ha! Huh! I knew that from the beginning of the game! I so did 99% of other people playing this game. Who the fuck am I kidding? If she acts like she's the best, then other people might think that way too. Right? Moldy faggot. Please just tell me you like my poems. I don't care if you hate them. Just please tell me I'm the best. I just... I really need to hear that from someone. I know I sound stupid, but there's a reason I never share my poems before this. Nasuki. Because... Because nobody ever takes me seriously. What's the point in sharing my poems if people just laugh and say, That's so cute. Just like you, Nasuki. Sometimes I don't want to be cute, but nobody understands that. I try really hard when I write. The style doesn't matter. The emotions are there. Why can't anyone see that? I just want... Nasuki trails off. Maybe it's because her lips started to quiver. I look down. Her fists are clenched really tightly. Hey, Nasuki. If you're not careful, you'll rip your own poem. I gently grab the poem with my own hand until she relaxes her grip on it. I place it flat on the desk and smooth out the wrinkles that she put into it. T don't read it. Before I can pick it back up, Nasuki snatches the poem from me and- Ah, fucking whore. Poem up from the desk. Okay. Snatches the poem up from the desk. It's not any good. And I know you hate my poems. So you don't have to read this one, okay? But I want to read it. But why? Because I like your poems. I really do. Why would I judge you for your style? It's not like my own style is anything crazy. I mean, it's true that the first time I wrote any poems, I didn't look much into it. But I know you better now. And it's wrong for you to think it, think your style is more amateur than hers. And Sayori, she always means well. But sometimes she's so focused on simple happiness that she doesn't understand what people really want. Yeah, I guess I never really thought about how hard it is for you. And I'm sorry if it... I was part of that problem. I understand now. You're not just cute, you're a lot more than that. Ah, uh, Nasuki, you're doing it again. Once again, Nasuki clutches her poem a little too hard. She looks down, hiding her eyes from me. I never realized how difficult this was for her. But finally, she forces herself to extend her arms and set her poem on the table. You can read it. Just turn that way. I don't want you to look at my face right now. Okay, I will. Because you. Tomorrow will be brighter with me around, but when today is dim, I can only look down. My looking is a little more forward because you look at me. Ooh, it's about me. When I want to say something, I say it with a shout, but my truest feelings can never come out. My words are a little less empty because you listen to me. When something is above me, I reach for the stars, but when I feel small, I don't get very far. My standing is a little bit taller because you sit with me. I believe in myself with all of my heart. But what do I do when it's, all, when it's torn all apart? My faith is a little bit stronger because you trusted me. My pen always puts my feelings to the test. I'm not a good writer, but my best is my best. My poems are a little bit dearer because you think of me. Because you, because you, because you. What, what, this game actually makes me feel like I'm really building a connection to somebody. And it's, <laughs> it's so ret retarded. Okay, no, uh, that's, that's very sweet, Sayori. I mean, Natsuki. Ta ta ta. Why are you looking at me like that? If you don't like it, then just say it. I won't get mad. No, it's not that I don't like it. It was just a little surprising to read. Or, I guess I'm not used to hearing such nice things coming from you. D don't say that, dummy. What do you think the point of writing is? Expressing things that you can't just say. Yeah, I understand. I'm sorry for missing the point sometimes. I always mean well. And I'm happy that you showed this to me. I liked it. Well, yeah. I'm I'm a pro, so... Natsuki mumbles, completely failing to sound confident like she usually does. Just remember that I can think of thing, these things sometimes, too. You know, when you're nice to me, it's... Meaningful. Ah, I'm glad. 
Sensing Natsuki's satisfied, I start to hand the poem back to her. But as I do, Natsuki takes my hands and pushes them away. Her small, soft hands surprise me with her assertion. I don't want it. Eh? Why not? I just don't. Jeez! I realize what Natsuki is doing. Unable to be honest, she's trying to give me the poem in a roundabout way. Well, in that case, I'm going to keep it. Instead of teasing her, I chose to go along with it. Good. If she didn't, I would. Never mind. Just, I'm glad that you want it. Natsuki backpedals on her words and leaves it at that. Despite her best efforts to hide her expression, I can see her faintly smiling to herself. That's all for now, so go put it away before someone sees it, okay? Ah, uh, yeah. I'll go do that. With that, I return to my seat so that I can put my away Natsuki's poem. She never read mine! What the hell? Okay. I don't think she read mine. I don't remember her reading mine. I'm gonna show it to, uh, Sayori. Dot, dot, dot. Hmm. It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote it for someone else, didn't you? Probably Nasuki. Eh? I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, moldy faggot. Sorry. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> Alright, just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me. Don't worry about me, okay? You can go play with everyone else now. If you insi- <laughs> Oh, hey. Thanks for dropping by. Oh, uh, no, 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 Stash. No, 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 Stash. <laughs> Stash. Sash, you can't get on the pillow right now, I'm sorry. Okay, hi. Yes, very nice to see you. Thanks for dropping by the video. You wanna read this with me? Let's go ahead. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori? Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I can say anything else, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. You gotta go down there, okay? You go ahead. <laughs> what are you doing? Who should I show my poem to next? Monica! Oh, Monica. I actually feel bad for Sayori. Like, I, 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 cause she was also, she was the competition for Nasuki, and I was like, mm, but I chose Nasuki. Even though she's a bitch. Hi, Moldy Faggot. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Well, being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people, I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure, but whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see. Ah! Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I let Monica take the poem holding my hands. Sticking with the Nasuki style once more, I see. Hmm, you really like Nasuki, don't you? Eh? That's- Oh, come on, moldy faggot. It's awfully suspicious, you know? Spending time with her in the club room every day. Pretending to like the manga that she's into. You know how Nasuki is. If I don't indulge her, she'll end up hating me. Eh? No, I think you're misunderstanding, moldy faggot. It's not like Nasuki just hates anyone who doesn't give her what she wants. Yeah, she's a serb, but that's not selfish. She's not that selfish. In fact, I think you're the only one who's indulged her as much as you have. Is that so? I kind of knew that, but I just didn't want to admit it. I just didn't want to admit it. So, I just need to ask one thing of you. Be careful, please? Natsuki's kind of unpredictable. A lot of times, she doesn't know what she wants. After all, she's the youngest one here. She might not know how to handle her own feelings properly. What I'm saying is, if something bad happens, then it could end up damaging the club, too. And you wouldn't want to do that to me, right? That's... I'm not sure how to respond to Monica. While I care about her in the club, it's also kind of unfair to bring that up. Well, you're smart. I'm sure you'll do the right thing. Monica smiles sweetly. Anyway... I'll share my poem with you now, alright? Er, uh, alright. The lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. Lost adrift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search. I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, when all others have turned away, the legend is all that remains, the last dark, dim star glimmering in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill, expressionless, 
but a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have, found, I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. And we seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. Oh, you know... I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sort of thing, sorts of things that give me life meaning. Not, that give life meaning, God, give me life meaning. Not to get too philo philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on my mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put that much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Paradoxical. Because if we all had, if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I know. I kind of thought about that too before. It seems like everyone in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. <laughs> are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you'd know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Uh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy? My teeth hurt. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much heart into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you what your writing is, that your writing is good or okay or bad, they want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way, and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own li little literature club, you, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. That was some long ass advice, Monica. And now my poop, my last favorite poopy girl, Yuri. Yeah, you should, you should really be, feel neglected. I really just do not care about you. Yuri doesn't look too enthusiastic about spending time with me. I guess if she changes her mind, she'll come to me. But I should leave her be for now. Well, well that was quick and painless. I guess she is picking up on the fact that I just do not care about her. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out... Hold on a second. Is it just me? Or did you say something strange just now? Eh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You dev deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is, most co is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. I wonder if finally our I mean, there's no twist. There's no twist, guys. But I wonder if there were. Oh, you bitch, hi. Okay, sorry, my sister walked down and, um, I accidentally clicked the fucking screen and then the whole thing, I, I, I clicked the screen, I started skipping shit by accident. No, I didn't spoil anything for myself, thank God. Um, but I started skipping shit and then I, you know, I hadn't read it yet for you. Fuck! I accidentally clicked the screen and I started skipping text and everything that I hadn't read for you guys yet. So then I had to go back to my previous load just to get back to this point and I kept skipping over shit. And it all got fucked up and just had like 15 minutes of this video. Luckily, I did not spoil anything though. I did not spoil anything for myself. So, I, you know, let's just get back into it before I get really pissed off. So anyway, you deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. C catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri is immune to it. Uh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Okay, that's, this is where we were. So, let's just get back into it. I was saying, oh, oh, wonder if that twist, that's not a twist, there's no twist, there's no twist, but there might be something, but there's no twist, that not twist might be soon, but there's no twist, there's my twist, twist, huh, what, let's just see, in your books, maybe, look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here, ah, it seems you're right, Sai, Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she, it's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around, where the heck did she run off to, anyway, I thought she just wanted, went to pee, Nasuki, please show up some decency. Oh, come on. Ah, uh, ah, uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well and went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you pick the time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovey-dovey. Uh, no! First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me lately, so I don't want- didn't want to force it. <laughs> That's cute- this- God, I got it so fucked up by- by getting- by fucking up the video and everything, I'm so pissed off. <laughs> that curious expression coming from Yuri, of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier, and everything is fine. What did she say? 
anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations. So, oh, okay, she just skipped right over that, huh? Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Nasuki will be making cupcakes, but we might need a lot of them and different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Nasuki? I can handle it, is what she's going to say. Challenge accepted. Oh, okay, not exactly what I expected. And as for myself, I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for Yuri... <laughs> Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Guys, can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. N no! That's not it at all. You're the most talented person here, you know. Now... Now, Nasuki's pouting too? Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case, but if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you have, to, you have beautiful handwriting, you know? So, you should make some banners and decorations to help out the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that, I... I love atmosphere! Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk and focuses and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great! You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, moldy faggot. The one who is truly useless. <laughs> Don't say that! In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You could always help me out as well. I would really be- I would be really appreciative of that. Ah, that's- Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to a suggestion like that? Ah, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't know how to bake, there's always some dirty work I give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice, and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. Yeah, you know I'm going to choose. Nasuki tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um, if I recall, Nasuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. <laughs> well, in fact, I may not like to be around if you only make him out to be a nuisance, so therefore, he may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on! I never said that! How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Morty Faggot to- What are you saying? It will be extremely malicious work. And baking isn't? Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think you'll have to motor faggot aside who he'd like to contribute. How he'd like to contribute. Besides, he hasn't really gotten the chance to spend any time with me yet, you know? So I'm sure he's interested in... You literally just said, I I'm surprised as well. S sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez! Can we just settle this already? Yeah, motor faggot. You're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Ah, uh, of course. Huh! <laughs> Very well. In that case, everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... Well, there is Sayori, but man... I don't want to mix it up. I've been trying to fuck Nasuki the whole game. Let's just go for it. Let's pound this bitch, right? Let's pound her. <laughs> pound it! Well, baking sounds like it could be fun. And you guys make it sound like a lot of work, so it could probably use two people. Don't worry. Baking is a ton of fun. You'll definitely agree. Eh? Just a minute ago, you were saying that, that... That's because... Never mind, okay? Well, anyway, you'll be fine by yourself, right, Yuri? Of course. I'm used to it, after all. That's... good. Even though Yuri is being melodramatic, it's a little hard not to feel bad. To not feel bad. So, that's everything, right? Anything else we need to talk about? No, I think that's it. Are you guys excited? Yes! Everything except the performance is gonna be awesome. I don't think that really counts. What are you- about you, Morty Faggot? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Yuri? Yuri? She's so sulking. Masuki starts pouting, too. It's not- I mean, it's not that big of a deal or anything. Well, it might not just be that. I think that Yuri might be feeling a little underappreciated in general. Having to come up with something for her to do and then nobody offering to help. That doesn't mean- Uh... Nasuki glances back and forth between everyone with a worried expression. Look, Nasuki goes over and puts her hand down on Yuri's shoulders. Yuri, you really are the most talented one here, and and you're going to help me make the event a lot more fun and welcoming. I mean, the cupcakes will probably help a lot too, but you're going to make the atmosphere special. That'll be really important for the way that people feel during their performances. So, you need to stop being dumb and give yourself a little more credit. Nasuki re releases her hands and turns around to face the other direction. You didn't really mean that, did you? Um, n not really, but 
Yuri is the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Nasuki's words. Asuki, of all people, could be saying such encouraging things. But I begin to understand. Nasuki is trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she's trying to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. I'm sorry for being dumb. I'm going to do my best. And all of us are going to make it a really great event. Yeah. Yeah! I hope to see everyone do their best, but with that, there's nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. Okay, but I'm staying here a bit longer. I barely have to do anything, any reading today, so fair enough, there's nothing wrong with that. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow, go, follow Monica and Yuri out the door as they chat between each other. Um, where are you going? Eh? We still need to figure out our plans for this weekend. You literally would have gotten home and realized that you didn't even have a way to contact me. Oh, that's true. I have no idea how that slipped my mind. Jeez, good thing I stopped you. I'm giving you my number, okay? Ooh, 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 ooh. You better not make it weird or anything. Why would I do that? <laughs> now Suki gives me her number. Okay, I'm coming over on Sunday. I'll bring all the ingredients. Wait, you're coming to my house? Well, yeah, what's wrong with that? I mean, I just figured that since I'm the one helping, I'd be going to your house. Yeah, right, like I could have a guy over at my house. My dad would kill me. Really? That's kind of strict, if you ask me. Yeah, how do you think I feel? I can't do anything when my dad is home. Anyway, I just need to complain for a second. We have each other's numbers now. That's all I need from you. I guess I'll text you when I'm coming over. Alright, fine by me. Yeah, I'm really going to show you why I love baking so much. So you'd be better. So you'd better look forward to it. Oh? Didn't you say you were just going to give me the dirty work? Well, I was just saying that. It's not like I could act like in front of everyone that I was looking forward to this. Wait, really? Well, kind of, just because I never got to bake with someone else before. That's all it is, so... Alright, I get it. Sorry for overreacting. Anyway, I'll be heading out now. See you on Sunday. Ah, uh, never mind. Mmm, I'm a dick- I'm a dicker dad. <laughs> God, I'm just, I gotta stop being so graphic. I can't believe this! Now, Suki's gonna be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof! Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us, or is it too early for that? Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait! It's already Sunday, and I'm gonna save this game before something goes wrong again. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Nasuki's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. I wonder if she'll act any different when it's just the two of us. Just the two of us. Meanwhile, she's been texting me a lot! We sent each other one after exchanging numbers to double check, but it turned into conversation. She's almost a different personality on the phone, using tons of emoji and cute language. She also really likes complaining about things, but I kind of saw that one coming. But putting Nasuki aside, I haven't heard a thing from, Sa from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? I decide to visit Sayori before Nasuki comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in a room. Oh god. It is, it's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, moldy faggot. I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. That, that doesn't look that messy, actually. <laughs> I mean, it's little. Never so recognized the same stuffed animal as Walter Grace that she's had for years now. <laughs> if you come, come over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. Well, that's because I end up cleaning for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Are we supposed to see Nasuki today? Yeah, but wait, how did you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed by the festival preparations, right? Ah, uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, uh, so it's just me and Asuki then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Ooh, the sad music! 
Oh, it's making the penis in here hurt. <laughs> Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's not good. That's no good, moldy faggot. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. So we can accidentally express my feelings. If I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting pushed for being so punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori! I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Sarah gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, moldy faggot. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> you're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, moldy faggot? I guess I have no choice this time. Butterflies in my stomach, guys. The thing is, I've had a really had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having to spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible to say Ori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I don't want to, uh, uh, fuck. Okay, I know this seems weird that I'm getting like this over the game. I don't want to make this anything other than the Let's Play it's been. Um, that's just kind of... I, I, I've, I've, um, only mentioned some stuff in some update videos before, but that was really, I just related, I don't know. I don't know how to say it without it being awkward, but I just related a lot to that. Um, that's, that's kind of, that's kind of what I said, uh, about, you know, you just want everyone to be hap happy so, that, so they don't worry about you because you're just mentioning depression and, I really don't want to make this. I don't. I don't want to make. I don't want to make this let's play something about me. I. I, I don't. I don't want to make. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. I'm ruining it. How is it possible? See where he kept this for me the entire. Now I've just got it. Now this is in my head, man. The entire time I've known her. Does she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you, even if there's only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. I don't understand at all, Moldy Faggot. Why don't you think? Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. So I want to see badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy, you guys are the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. I'm 
I'm sorry I'm being so weird about this. I really am. I'm really sorry I'm being so weird about this, but this is just really weird. This is really weird. This is really weird, because this is like, this is kind of just... On the way home, a song came on by one of my favorite bands, Beartooth, that was called Sick and Disgusting. And I felt like it was like I wrote it. It was amazing how much it described m me or how I felt. It was like exactly the kinds of things I would say. And now exactly how she is wording these things and how she, why she wants everyone to be happy and why she wants them to care about other things and how she doesn't want to be cared about and how she doesn't want people to know that she feels this way because then they worry and she just wants everyone to be happy because she doesn't want them to waste that on her. I'm like really trying not to, not to ruin this let's play right now, but it's just kind of like, this is just too personal like all of a sudden. This is really weird. I like this game a lot. What? Mm. <laughs> let's just keep playing guys, okay? Oh God, dude. It's just hidden, it's just hidden too hard. It's just, it's just, it's too close to... Oh. <sighs> Jesus Christ, I am ruining this. I am, they're gonna, they're fucking, people are gonna be so fucking freaked out, dude. I'm ruining this. I might cut this out because this is too fucking weird. <sighs> I'm gonna fucking cry. <laughs> Goddamn, let's play. All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, really. I'm ruining the mood of this. Let's just continue. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club, it feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leaves nothing but hurt. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori, but I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you to stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Moldy Faggot, there's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped us if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. What the fuck? I can't get through. Okay. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I know. I know. I'm acting really weird and crazy about this. It's just a fucking game. But just this. Why? How are they saying the thing, this, the specific things that they're saying? Like, I, I only touched up a little bit on this stuff before. I don't want to make, I don't want to talk about this on this on the channel. Never mind. I just gotta, just gotta calm down. I just gotta calm down and just keep going and stop ruining this for you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Uh, uh, moldy faggot. Sayori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the, the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Moldy faggot. Sayori isn't hugging me back, despite my arms being wrapped around her. Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this, moldy faggot. I Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if what I'm doing if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't I don't know. I don't know. 
I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Moldy Faggot. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm in pain, feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah, it's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Uh, um, uh. It's what I want, I promise. I, I think that would be nice then. Yeah. So I wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Nasuki to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want me to come along and help out? You want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that'd be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit our house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy, but it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Asuki is about to come over, too. I think Sayori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. I spent only a few minutes back at home actually wait awaiting Nasuki's arrival. I'm really wondering if I should go on for Sayori now because now, now I like her a lot more. <laughs> she grew on me through the game. I liked her in the beginning, but why am I breeding so much into this? Before I know it, she texts me to let me know she's outside the front door. Without delay, I open the front door to let her in. Sup? Hey. I don't know what I was expecting, but seeing Nasuki in something other than her school uniform totally threw me off. Seeing her such cu cu cute clothes made the uniform seem totally unfitting in comparison. Jeez, don't make it so feel feel so awkward already. It's going to be a long afternoon, so don't be weird just because you're not used to seeing me outside of school. Anyway, I'm coming in. I see you brought a lot of stuff. Nasuki's carrying a large bag that was probably full of baking supplies. Well, well, I didn't want to come all this way to find out that your kitchen isn't equipped for the job. You bought everything I asked you to, right? Yeah, I did. Yesterday, Nasuki asked me to buy a bunch of ingredients if I didn't already have them at home. Good. Glad I could count on you to do your part. Well, of course. I'm surprised to hear Nasuki suddenly say that, rather than something snarky like she usually does. Could it be that she's a little different outside of school after all? Anyway, let's go to the kitchen. What? You're not even going to offer to take this heavy bag from me? Where's your hospitality, moldy faggot? Come on. Or, come on. Since when did I need to be a gentleman? I grab the bag and Nasuki holds out to me. Gah! This is ridiculously heavy. <laughs> I carried that all the way here. Are you impressed? I see now. Yeah, I am impressed, Nasuki. It se seems like I always underestimate you. <laughs> it's because I'm so small, isn't it? You jerk. Nasuki hits a fist into my chest. Hey, hey, your size has nothing to do with it. Do you really hate being small that much? Eh? Um, it's not like I hate it. I mean, sometimes I like proving people wrong and they only think I'm worth my size. It's fun when I get to be small and also better than other people, but geez, never mind. Why? What are you making me say? Don't think you can make me talk about weird things just because we're not at school. Are we getting started or what? There's a lot of stuff I gotta teach you. Ah, uh -huh. what? That's a little bit more like you. You're more fun when you just speak your mind like that. H hey, now you are treating me like a kid. I was just trying to be a little nicer to you, you know? And just because I don't have a mature and sexy figure like Yuri doesn't mean you should treat me like- Yuri's ugly! No! No! Uh, uh! Nasuki catches her words and her face turns red. Nasuki. Forget it! I didn't say anything! I, I should apologize. Uh -huh. I appreciate that you're trying to be nicer. I should have been a little more considerate, too. But also, if that's what you're thinking, then you should know that there are tons of guys who are into body types like yours. Uh, how would- you know that anyway. Well, I mean, I chose her, so I mean, fuck. I didn't like Yuri at all. Anyway, just trust me on this one. Gross. Hey, what was, was that to me? Who else? Man, let's just get started already. Ah, you get all sour when a girl calls you gross. I finally found your weakness, moldy faggot. Asuki smiles deviously. Please spare me. Well, if Nasuki decides to dish out more insults like that, there's no way I'm not fighting back. But she's satisfied enough for now, finally starting to pull things out of her bag so we can get started. Before long, the whole kitchen is a mess. Spoons, dirty bowls, flour, spilled fluid, and plastic bags are strewn about every countertop. The mixer isn't big enough to make all the batter at once, so we've had to do it several times. Meanwhile, Nasuki is babysitting all of my movements to make sure I don't mess up her precious baking. 
Moldy found it. Where did you put the food coloring? The batter is going in the oven soon, so I need to fill the trays. I, th I think it's still in the bag next to the table. What are you using it for? To color the batter, of course. I'm making each tray a different color. That way, even if the flavors aren't different, everyone can still pick their favorite. Ah, that's a cute idea. Are we doing anything like that with the icing? Do you want to? Ah, uh, you're asking me? I don't really have a preference, so... Come on, you're not putting any heart into this at all. Can't you just... Can't you at least try to have fun? I'm having fun. I'm not really sure what Azuki's trying to get out of me. Meanwhile, I see her separate the batter into smaller bowls and put a few drops of food coloring in each. Ah, that does look pretty cool. See? It's not like baking is just about following instructions. The presentation... The presentation is where you get to be creative and have the most fun. It's a million times worse, more worth it in the end if just looking at it makes everyone's eyes lighten up. Like the ones you made on my first day, huh? I recall Natsuki proudly presenting her cat-shaped cupcakes and to Sayori and Monica's delighted expressions. I wonder if I can make Natsuki proud like that too. Yeah, maybe I'll use the food coloring then. Sounds like you're starting to understand. Just make sure you completely finish mixing the icing before you mess with the food coloring. Yeah, it's getting there. We were using the extra for the batter, so I got stuck with a whisk and a huge bowl of the icing. Eh? Uh -huh. The icing's still all lumpy. Are you even trying? Well, yeah. It'll just take a little longer. Jeez, I'll be here all night if you do it like that. Here, look. And she grabs a whisk from me and uses her other hand to shove the bowl back. You really need to beat the crap out of it! After a few seconds, the consistency of the icing has already improved. See? As if to emphasize, Natsuki sticks a finger in the icing and pops it in her mouth. I reluctantly start to do the same. Hey! Natsuki suddenly grabs my wrist. I don't want your gross fingers in my icing. You're icing, eh? Are you forgetting who did all the work? I start to fight back, trying to inch my finger toward the bowl. Don't make me beat the crap out of you next. I'd like to see you try. I push harder, just enough for my finger to reach the icing. I try to scoop some with my finger, just as Natsuki tugs with all her might. Ah! The force on Suki pulling me caused me to stumble, making her stumble in turn. Gross! You got it on my face! Whose fault is that? There's a big glob of icing on Suki's cheek. <laughs> she tries to reach it with her tongue, but it's too far away. Jeez, you know what? Take this! And Suki instead wipes it off her finger before shoving her finger toward my face. You wish! I'm faster. I grab her wrist with my hand before she reaches my face. Then Suki tries to use her other hand to fight back, but I grab that one as well. Oh yeah! Oh ho ho ho! Whoa! Ah, stop! Not until you apologize for calling me gross. Fine, fine. I'm sorry for calling you gross. I know, you know I didn't. I don't mean it. It's just fun seeing how you react to it. You do that to me all the time, you know, saying dumb things just to get a reaction out of me. You really shouldn't tease girls like that. Is that so? In that case, I probably shouldn't do this either. I took on Suki's finger, put it in my mouth, licking off the icing. Oh God! <laughs> what? 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 Did Did you seriously just? Ah! Natsuki's so surprised that she can't even figure out how to get mad at me. Her face is entirely red. Moldy faggot, you really shouldn't do the kind of thing to girls, unless you really like them. You know that, right? What kind of question is she asking me, just like that? How did the mood turn into this so quickly? I... Natsuki gazes at me in silence. I notice her shallow breaths. Why am I starting to feel dizzy? Eh? Out of nowhere, the fire alarm starts going off. I'm just gonna save. This is getting fucking climatic. We're gonna fuck. I don't know what's going on. Fire alarm's going off. Crazy shit going down right now, man. Uh, shit. Um. Natsuki rushes over to the oven. Is something burning? I thought you didn't put the cupcakes in yet. Cuff. No wonder. You left a dirty tray in here, dummy. How could you make a mistake like that? You should have checked. You should have checked before turning the oven on. Don't blame me for your mistakes. Jeez! Asuki uses an oven mitt to grab the blackened tray out of the oven. She sets it on top of the stove. In another moment, the fire alarm stops. Anyway, I'm putting them in the oven now. Yeah. The tension from the, mo the moment before still lingers over our heads, but the moment has already been lost. I watch as Asuki slides a couple of trays into the oven. Then I reluctantly pick up the whisk and continue with the icing, like nothing ever happened. Ah, that smells so good, Natsuki says, after smelling my heaping pile of poop that I took on the kitchen counter. <laughs> I don't know. The cupcakes are ready to be pulled out of the oven. As soon as Natsuki opens the door, a blast of sweet-smelling warm air fills the room. Look how cute they all look. She proudly shows off the different colored cupcakes in each of the trays. They'll look even better once we add the icing. Not like you need to tell me that. I brought decorating stuff, so I hope you can get creative. Here, scoop the icing into these bags. Natsuki hands me some plastic bags. I have these nozzles that'll make it look nice and fluffy. This one can even make flowers. We probably won't be using it this time, though. What's this one for? I pick up one of the nozzles that has a much thinner tip than the others. That one's really thin, so you can use it to make stripes or other patterns. But you can also use it to write stuff on cake, like happy birthday or whatever. Huh, I see. That gives me an idea, actually. 
Eh? Well, it's a literature event, right? We could make it more literature themed by writing a different word on each of the cupcakes. It would be fun to see people choose their cupcake based on a word they like. Uh, hmm? I was kind of expecting you to say something really stupid, but that's actually a really cute idea. So, uh, maybe I'm getting it from you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm not cute. Come on, we're not at school. Nobody's judging. You can dress and act like this and not, you can't dress and act like this and not expect me to think you're cute. Well, let's see his voice trails off. Same with you. Eh? Did you say something? No, nothing. Let's just do the icing. A Suzuki picks up the pace and fastens a nozzle onto each of the bags. There's a lot to do, so we shouldn't be wasting time. Here, I'll show you how to do it. Without giving me a chance to think about before, Nasuki quickly moves on. She shows me how to apply the icing, and then we get to work. When we're finally finished, Nasuki puts them all side by side to admire our work. Look how pretty they are all together. They are together. Yeah, they are, aren't they? Uh, I wish I could have one now. Well, there's no reason you can't, can't, right? I don't see any harm in that. Well, yeah, but my dad's making dinner tonight, so I really need to save my appetite. <laughs> Sayori's the exact opposite in that regard. If she was here, we'd probably be down ten cupcakes already. And she would still eat dinner. Come on, that's just unhealthy. Besides, when my dad cooks, I need to eat as much of it as I can. Well, anyway, I was hoping we would have time for mango, but I need to be home for dinner. Uh, really? Already? That's a shame. It's your fault for working so slowly. You should have thought about that. It's not like you'll always have this chance. Man, as usual, Nasuki places the blame on me. You can bring the cupcakes tomorrow, right? If you and Sayori each carry something, you can probably do it in one trip. Yeah, I can do that. And don't worry, I won't let her eat any. <laughs> I wish she would listen to me that way she listens to you. Ah, yeah. I think, I again, think back to the conversation I had with Sayori earlier today. I felt so helpless. Sayori always does listen to me, but at that point, it felt like she couldn't listen to me at all. Okay, I'm all packed up. Good work today. You too. I'll walk you out, I guess. Just like that, Asuki's already ready, about to leave. It feels like the afternoon went by in a flash. More than that, did I even take the opportunity to get closer to her like I wanted? Well, I guess I'll be off then. Thanks for all the help and everything. I'll see you tomorrow. Wait, Nasuki. Eh? Huh? What you said before, about not always having this chance. It doesn't have to be that way at all. I had fun today. You showed me how fun baking can be, like you wanted. But aside from that, you can come over anytime, okay? I think that, if possible, I'd like to spend more time like this. If you want to read manga or go out somewhere... Um, do you really mean that? Nasuki looks at me intensely, like she's trying to hide her expression. Yeah, I want to spend more time with you. Holy faggot, I thought you only cared about getting this done. Uh, I'm sorry I had to leave so early today. I really didn't want to. I would really stay here longer if I could. I feel the same way as you, as you, so... Oh! Oh! Whew! Whew! Oh, this little guy's getting fast now! Nasuki suddenly gets closer to me. Wait, Nasuki. Standing inches from me, Nasuki looks up to me. I feel her fingers gently clutch at the sides of my shirt as if holding on to me. Her rose-colored cheeks and matching eyes fill my vision, along with her slightly parted lips. What is happening? My head starts to go dizzy as I feel her soft breath against me. I felt it for a while now. Whoo! As soon as someone jumps back, S Sayori? No! You ruined it! You ruined it! Eh? Ah! Hi, Moldy Faggot! Sayori! Just now we weren't. Eh? It's okay, Moldy Faggot. I just stopped by to say hi. Uh, uh, well, you should have come a little earlier. I'm already on my way out, so. Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. Yeah, well, I'll still see you at the festival tomorrow, so it's fine. Just don't eat any cupcakes before then. Anyway, later. You bitch, I was just gonna get some major tang, bro. Clearly flustered. Nasuki hurt. Blah, blah, blah. Nasuki hurries off, and Sayori waves goodbye. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know... How much fun you're having with Nasuki. And how close she got to her. Makes me really happy. She's this is crying. You ain't happy. That's that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall on Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Moldy Faggot? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This really changed. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Moldy Faggot. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, 
What I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So, even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. B but Sarah looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Morty Faggot. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself, Moldy Faggot. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And, and, that's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I saw my hand down, so, oh, God. I thought it was, it was going to, I saw my hand down Sayori's pants. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> the arm and squeeze her hand on my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your own feelings, I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give to you. Sayori, I love you. Yeah, we're going with that. I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So, there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner, but spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day, it helped me realize that you truly are the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens, as long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side, then I know we'll both be happy. Moldy faggot. Suddenly, Sarah wraps her arms tightly around me. Moldy faggot, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sarah in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Moldy Faggot. I want to be with you forever. Wow, this is just going crazy. Wow, a lot of progression. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weakening a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now, why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Moldy Faggot. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. But no matter how long it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Uh, okay, I trust you. Sayori and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes a festival tomorrow our first date, huh? I fucked it up with Nasuki. <laughs> what are you saying? I'm gonna go ahead and save this, um, in that slot. Damn, did I make the wrong choice? I don't- I don't know! I don't know! I don't want to think about these things, you know? I want everything to be the same as it always been. Even if really are a couple. I don't know if I could handle anything more in it. What? I don't- I just threw Masuki away. I, I don't know if I wanted to do it. I don't know if I wanted to do that. I don't know. Ugh. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Moldy Faggot. So he gazed at me once again, smiling sadly. If I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Eh? I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I, I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It felt like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah, I do. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her, and she loves me. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Isn't that what Sayori meant by not wanting to, anything to change? I don't know. But I know that I'll give it everything I've got. Anything you want it, any way you want it, that's the way you need it. Sayori's the most important person to me, and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. Ah, I ruined it with Masuki, I think. It's the day of the festival. And that's it for this Let's Play. So, uh, that wraps up episode four of Doki Doki Literature Club. I've been recording for like an hour and a half, so I kind of, yeah, we got to get, uh, we got to get going there. So, um, things are progressing. And, uh, obviously I could have sealed the deal with Nasuki if I had just told, um, Sayori that we were really friends. But man, she's really reeling me in. It's really making it hard to, to, oh, this is high intensity. I don't know what to do. I'm feeling like any choice I make is a mistake. This is, this is a really good game. I re and it's still, still, whatever is coming, I don't even know, still hasn't happened yet. All I know is that I already really like the game and there's been no fucking twist, really. But there is no, there isn't twist, it's just a normal dating game. Like I said, anyway. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. If you enjoyed, feel free to like, subscribe, and comment. If you do comment, I will answer because, as I always say, I have absolutely no life and nothing better to do with my life, so I love hearing feedback. I, uh, really, um, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, yeah, so, 
I will see you in the next video, which will probably be episode five of this or whatever I'm uploading. And uh, I'm really excited to get to that. So thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Uh, and as always, have a fantastic day. Hello, everyone. My name is Shreem Fire Jane. Welcome back to Tokyo Doki Literature Club. Hot bitch, lollipop. KO! The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from Natsuki's feet. Freddy will try to catch her. Fox tops up her hands and the bottom of fly. I die. Crash! Oh my.